In this video tutorial, we'll discuss what attributes we can use within the input tag in HTML. I hope you guys are able to see the screen now. So, we'll go through the syntax and usage of some important attributes we can use within the input tag in HTML. But before we begin, make sure that you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and press that bell icon to never miss any updates from Simply Code. So, without any further delay, let's get started. We have been through the input element previously. The input element is used within the form tag to take the user's input. We know the different types of input options in HTML like the radio buttons, checkboxes, emails and many more. Today, we'll talk about the attributes we can use with the input element. HTML attributes refer to an element's additional properties or characteristics. We already know about the type attribute we use within the input element. So that attribute is used to define the type of input. We can use values like name, email, number, password, and many more such values. So let's take a small example of using the type attribute first. We'll not go into detail about this attribute as we have already discussed it previously. So what we'll do is we'll move to the VS code and we'll start a code right here. So we are going to use the form tag first. So this is a form tag. Now we are going to use the input element. So we'll write over here input. Let's say type. Type is going to be ready. Fine. Now let's write something over here. So let's say we are writing over here JavaScript. Save the program and you can see here that this radio button is present on the browser. So you can see here we have this radio button. We can change the value here for the type attribute. Right. We can use other values like text, name, email, etc. So the first attribute we are going to discuss in this video is the value attribute. This attribute is used to provide an initial value to an input. Let me take you through the programming part directly so that you guys won't be get confused. So we'll write over here. Let's give a break over here. And now we'll write over here input. So let's add a label first before we go into the input element. So we are going to use the label element and we are going to write here, let's say, false name. Fine. Now we'll write over here inside the input element. Let's use the type attribute first. Type is going to be text for this one. Now we'll use name. So name we are going to write here, let's say F name for this full name. Now we are going to write here value. So let's say the value is going to be RAM. Fine. So we are going to close this input element over here. Save the program. And you can see here, we have a value present here automatically. You can see RAM present over here in the browser. So it is present inside the input box. Let me tell you guys about an interesting attribute. now: The disabled attribute. It is used to disable an input box. So let's imagine a scenario, you are redirecting the user to a page where you can have an input option box which is already present with the user. So you want the user to enter other details except for the username. In that case, you can mention the disabled attribute within the input element and that's it. So let's go through it once. So what we'll do is we'll move to a VS code and we'll write over here. So let's use the break type first or we are going to use this input box only. So we are going to write here disable. Fine. So this is the attribute. We have put it over here inside the input element. Now save the program and you will see we cannot make changes to this input box now. This is because of the disabled attribute. The next attribute we will discuss is the read only attribute. This attribute also works the same as the disabled attribute. So a read only attribute or we can say a read only input field cannot be changed. However, a user can tap on it. He can highlight it. And even he can copy text from that input box, but he can't change the value. So let's try it over here. We are going to use the read only attribute, but this time we are going to change the label. name. So let's say we are going to write here label, close this tag. So we are going to use it for last name. Fine. We are going to use the input element again. We'll write here input type as text. Then we are going to use the name attribute. Name is going to be, let's say, L name. And then we are going to use the value attribute. So value we are going to, let's say, provide here, Amun. Fine. Now we are going to use the read only attribute. So we'll write over here, read only. If you guys are using VS Code, you will get this at once. So save the program. And here you can see we have last name as Amun. Fine. Now, we are not able to make changes in this box as well. You can see I'm clicking on it, but I'm not able to make any change. I can copy it. I can select the test, but I can't change. 
So the disabled attribute and the read only attribute work almost exactly the same. We are not able to change the values in either of the case, right? The next attribute we'll discuss is the max length attribute. So this attribute is used to specify the maximum length of an input box. For example, if we use this attribute and set the maximum value to 4, then it will not allow the user to enter any value with more than 4 characters. So let's do it, do it over here as well. So we are going to write here after this. Let's add one more label. Now we are going to use it. So let's write something over here. Let's say subject. Fine. So we'll write over here after subject. Input. Type we are going to write here. So text let's say. And then we'll write over here name. Name is going to be subject. Then we'll write over here max length. So max length is going to be let's say 4. Close the input element and save the program. And you can see we have a normal input box present over here. So here you can see we have this input box. Now let's do one thing. We are going to use the break tag over here to make it more clear for you guys. So here is our subject. Now, so let's do one thing. Let's try to write something over here inside the subject box. Fine. Now we'll write something over here. Let's say HTML. Fine. HTML is working fine because we have four characters in this word. Now let's try to write something with more than four characters. Let's say JavaScript. So let's say we are trying to write over here JavaScript, but you can see I'm only able to write Java over here because the maximum length is already set to four. So this is how we can use the maximum length attribute or we can say the max length attribute within an input tag. The next attribute we are going to use is the min and the max attribute. So these attributes specify the minimum and maximum value for an input field. So let's use these attributes for any quantity. Let's do it quickly over here. We are going to use the break tag once more. So we are going to write here break tag. Let's put it twice. Now we are going to put a label over here. For label, we are going to write, let's say, quantity. Fine. Now we are going to use the input tag once more. So we'll write over here input tag type is equals to to number we are going to use the number type name let's say is going to be quantity and we'll set the min value to 1 and the max value to 10. Fine. Close the input tag. Save the program and you can see here we have this box present for quantities. We can only write numbers in here but the moment we take our cursor after writing something so let's say we are writing over here this number the number is one two three one two three and you can see the max length is 10 fine or we can say the max value is 10 so the moment you take your cursor over these arrows you can see it says values must be less than or equal to 10 so it will not allow the user to enter any value greater than 10 doing this can restrict the user from choosing a value between a specific range the next attribute we have is the required attribute. For this attribute, we are going to need a submit button. So let's create one first. Now we are going to write here after this, we are going to use the break tag first. Now we are going to write the code for adding a button. So we are going to use the input element for this. Let's say input type is going to be submit and we'll write over here value. As well. Value is going to be submit for this submit button. And that's it. Save the program. And you can see we have the submit button present over here in the new line. So let's use the break tag once more. Now we are going to see the usage of required attribute. Fine. So the required attribute will not let the user go ahead with, without filling a particular input box. So for example, if you are writing over here, let's say input type is equals to text. Let's add something over here. So we'll write over here let's say name, name is going to be add and then we'll write over here, we are not going to use any value. So we'll close it and we'll add the required attribute. So we'll write required over here, save it now. And here you can see we have an input box. There's no label for this particular input box. Now click on submit button and you can see it says, please fill out this field. So it, we cannot submit this form without mentioning anything over here. So let's say we are mentioning something over here. Now click on submit and you can see we are not getting any more pop up for this now. So it says please fill out this field as well if we take our cursor to this particular input box. Fine. So that's how the required attribute within the input tag is used. The next attribute we'll use is the list attribute. 
This attribute is used within the input attribute, but every time we use this attribute, we need a data list element. We need to mention the options we provide for the list within the data list element only. So let's go through the programming part for this as well. We are going to mention break over here two times and now we are going to use the label input element first. So we are going to write here label and let's say we are writing languages over here. Then we'll write here input. So we are going to use the list attribute. So list is going to be let's say for languages. Fine. We'll write let's say name as lang and close this input box save the program and here you can see we have this label and an input box present over here fine click on it and you can see we are able to write anything inside this input box now what we are going to do is we are going to use the data list element so we'll write over here data list and we are going to use an id for this let's say let's say the id is lang1 now close the data list element now we are going to put options over here so let's say we are writing over here option value is going to be html first then we'll write over here again an option so let's remove this option from here we are going to copy this so let's copy it from here and we are going to paste it for some time fine for four times basically so let's paste it over here save the program and here you can see we'll remove these options first Save it and we are going to change the values as well so let's say we have CSS then we have JavaScript and finally let's say we have PHP as well fine so we have different options present over here let me just quickly do it save it and here you can see it's not working as of now so let me check if there is anything wrong so we have this list as languages, then we have id as lang, and we have all the options present over here. Fine. So let's change the name to languages. Save it. Move to the browser, and you can see we are still not able to manage it, or we are not able to make any changes over here. So let me check once again. And we have all these names right over here and we have this id as lang1 after it we have html css javascript and php so let me close this option tag once so so leave it guys i'll get back to you with the correct answer for this question so it's not working as of now it might be an issue with the VS code as well so we'll check it and we'll get back to you now moving ahead let's go through the multiple attribute now the multiple attribute allows the user to choose more than one option so let me take you through the demo part directly what we'll do is we'll write over here label and we'll mention for let's say we are going to write here files we are going to write here select files and we'll write input element over here so we'll write here input type is equals to file id is equals to files and we'll write name as files and we are going to use the multiple attribute over here so we'll write over here multiple that's it save the program and you can see we have this option to choose a file from a computer now what we can do is we can choose more than one file so we can click on it and here you can see we have multiple files so we'll choose three files and here you can see it says three files because we have chosen three files so guys the number of attributes present within the input tag is so large that we can't discuss all of them at once so these are some of the most important attributes we need the most while creating a form with html i hope you guys understood what we have learned in this video and about this data list we'll check and we'll get back to you in the upcoming video so we'll see what wrong here what's wrong here and we'll get, get back to you on the next video so don't worry about it so it's time to say goodbye and i'll catch you guys in another session if you enjoyed watching this session do give it a thumbs up comment your doubts below and we'll definitely help you until then keep coding and stay tuned to simply code